Hello everyone. So today we're doing something a little bit different. Uh, as you may know, after a couple of different videos that I have done on the topic, I'm a big fan of EOS and the E Foundation and Marina as well. And just generally being able to run a de-googled version of Android on my smartphones. Well, from those videos, you've had lots of questions. So today we're gonna answer them. I've gathered up all the questions that we've had across the different videos that I've done on this topic. Links for those videos will be down below. Uh, and I think it's important to mention that, you know, I run EOS on my CMF Phone 1 uh, exclusively and have done for at least the last six months or so now. And alongside that, have also reviewed other phones that um, have had EOS installed on them, the Fairphone 4. Four and the Fairphone 6. Both of those were sent to me by Marina to review, uh, but I've never been paid by Marina for my opinion or never been paid in any way to promote their operating system. I just really love it. And so I want to kind of be able to do these videos for you to help educate and uh, maybe show that there is a way that you can run Android without having to use Google. And like I said, a lot of the videos that I've done, there's lots of questions and understandably so, it can be quite a confusing topic. So today I've kind of collated the top 10 questions and we're gonna go through those. And of course, if you have more questions, comment down below and I'll try and help if I can in the comments or maybe other community members will as well. All right, let's get into it. Can you switch over a phone that already has Google on it? This is a good question. And the answer is a resounding yes. In fact, if you go over to the eFoundation website, there's a web page that lists the devices that they currently support, and that's over 200 different smartphones. So chances are your phone is probably supported in some way. Some of those devices are supported by their desktop installer program, which makes it very easy to install EOS. Others, you have to kind of flash the ROM yourself, which is a little bit more technical, often requires using the command line and some technical knowledge. So it might not necessarily be for the faint of heart. Having said that, of course, the other option you have is definitely to buy a phone that already has EOS installed. So I would go over to their website, which I'll again link down below and check out your device and see what options are available to you. But yes, lots of devices are supported that you can install EOS onto, even if they've already got a different Android operating system that's using Google. Can I open banking apps on EOS? Now this is definitely a little bit of a gray area and it unfortunately does depend on the developers of those specific banking apps. For me personally, uh, the banks that I've used, I've found that Santander and Monzo in the UK work perfectly. However, Starling doesn't. It displays an error saying my device is modified and that it won't allow me to access my account. So it is gonna come down to the banks themselves because it really does depend on what they deem is a secure device. There's nothing insecure about EOS, but by its nature of being a custom version of Android, for some people, that's enough to deem it not secure, which is a shame. And yes, it can be a sticking point. You definitely need to have a look at your own specific banking app to see if it's gonna work for you. What's going on with NFC? Can you use Google Wallet or is there another alternative? Uh, this is a subject that is also comes up quite often because people obviously like contactless payments. Uh, now for me, the main phone that I'm using it on is the CMF Nothing Phone, which doesn't have NFC anyway. So it wouldn't work even if it was supported. And uh, the more general answer is, I, as far as I'm aware, Google Wallet is not supported. Again, by the nature of this being a device specifically tailored towards removing Google. And there are third party options available. I know that Curva have their own implementation for payments, but again, I'm not sure if that functions on these, on devices running EOS or not. From my experience with using Huawei devices, which are obviously another de-Googled, although you're just changing big company for other big company, uh, I know that Curva does a version that works on those devices with NFC, so maybe there's a version that works for EOS as well. But I also know that this is a very important topic to Marina, and it is something that they're working on to come up with a solution that keeps Google and other big companies from just harvesting your data, but allows you to do contactless payments. Can you use different launchers? Yes, so for those that are familiar with Android, uh, you can install custom 
launchers, custom home screens that will do lots of different things and configure your device in lots of weird and wonderful ways. And right here, you can still do the same. Uh, this is very much still an Android operating system. You can still download through the app lounge any launcher that you like and have your home screen customized in any way you like. I know a lot of people's sticking point with EOS is that the built-in launcher is very minimalistic. It's quite reminiscent of like iOS, certainly the old versions of iOS where there weren't really widgets and you kind of just get a list of the apps that you have installed. Uh, so you can definitely install a custom third-party launcher to correct that if that is something that you want. What about paid apps via Google Play? So again, another question that comes up quite a lot is, well, I've bought all these apps on the Google Play Store, I still want to have access to them. And you can do that. Uh, the App Lounge, which is the built-in app store on EOS, allows you to log into your Google account to access your Play Store uh, purchases. So you can still download all your paid for apps and games, no problem at all, with the obviously small condition that you do still have to log into a Google uh, account to be able to do that. You're not giving over your device, even in that instance, to Google like you do with traditional Android, but uh, you are still having to have a Google account to be able to access those paid apps on the Play Store. If you wanted to buy new apps, again, you still have to have a Google account to pay for those apps on the Play Store. So unfortunately, if you want to buy apps on the Play Store, you can't escape having a Google account. However, if you want to download free apps, you can do that completely anonymously and you don't have to have a Google account. And you can also obviously sideload APK files, it's still Android, or you can even get other ways like uh, progressive web apps and other ways of installing apps on your phone that don't involve the Play Store. And if you're enjoying this video, please do make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. We're still a very small channel um, and I have a rather ambitious goal of 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Every single subscriber really, really would help towards that goal. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please do check out my Patreon or YouTube memberships as well. All right, on with the questions. Out of interest, what do you think is the likelihood of this operating system still being viable five years down the line? Well, this is a tough one to answer, obviously, like any business, any technology, I've got no idea what's going to happen in five years time. But what I will say is I think Marina has a very stable business model by selling phones with Marina pre-installed and by offering cloud services, they have ways to generate revenue without compromising their users. They don't have to sell adverts to their users. They don't have to mine their data and sell on that data. So they have a very stable revenue stream which also means they don't have to rely on community support as much. So unlike maybe other open source community driven projects, which really just rely on that community involvement and support, they do have, Marina does have a monetary business side to keep things backed and working. They also have really great partnerships with Fairphone, which is a strong indicator that other people in, in the industry are supporting this idea and keen on this idea. So I think, out of all the de-Googled, Google-free Android space, this is the one that could really stick and could really last. They have the business side to make it happen. And ultimately, of course, if it doesn't happen, if it all kind of unfortunately falls to the wayside, you'll always have the opportunity to reflash your device with whatever stock version of Android came with that device. Even if you buy a phone from Marina with EOS pre-installed, you could still reflash Android onto that, whether it's a fair phone or anything else, you could still get that default experience back again. So it's not really a huge risk. There's only really wins to be had here if you're someone that is worried about giving Google all your data. What's the difference between a Marina branded EOS phone and a plain EOS install? Nothing. Nothing is different at all. A Marina branded EOS phone is simply just a phone that's had EOS already installed on it. Um, and it is kind of the subset of devices that Marina are kind of more officially supporting. I, if you look through the 200 plus, plus devices, some of those are community supported or relying on people to make those builds. Uh, I don't believe they are directly supporting all 200 plus devices. However, any devices that they sell on their store they are directly supporting and you are getting all those updates 
in a timely manner and everything else like that. So there's that, I guess, slightly more official support side of it, but in terms of the actual operating system, the actual software that you're using, there is no difference at all. You're gonna get the same experience either way. It's just really, essentially, you're paying Marina for the simplicity of buying a phone that already has it compared to the perhaps complexity of having to install it yourself. Can you install Proton's Cloud Suite? Mail, VPN, Drive on EOS? Yes. Yes, you definitely can. Again, you can install any free apps from the Play Store that you like. Uh, some might not function correctly if they're really deeply tied to Google services. Although if they use some Google services, they should still work because there is support for like anonymized Google services. But in terms of Proton specifically, well, that's actually a suite of tools that I use myself for my email, for my drive cloud storage, um, and also for my VPN. Not sponsored, by the way. So uh, yeah, they all work absolutely flawlessly. They install and run just like they would on any other Android device. Um, and that's the same for any cloud service. If there is any particular service that you want to use, you can, or you can even roll your own by using something like Nextcloud or something to uh, install a self-hosted solution. The only difference really with what the solution that Marina offers is that it comes as standard with the phone. So when you're setting up the phone, you have the option to use it. That's it. It's just another service that you can choose to use or choose not to use. What's better, EOS, IDOS, Graphene OS, any other de-Googled operating system? It really does depend on your needs. There are lots of different custom ROMs still out there. Uh, not as many as there used to be in the heyday of custom ROMs and flashing Android left, right and center, but they do still exist. And it really does depend on where you want to kind of align uh, what your device can and can't do, what information your device does and doesn't give out. I think personally, EOS is a really nice balance. Now granted, I am a little biased in the fact that I think it's the best one. <laughs> so, you know, I haven't necessarily looked at every single one available, but I do think it gives a really nice balance of being able to still access the apps and the stuff that you want to be able to access easily through the app lounge, uh, but also limit what influence Google has on your device, what tracking apps can do, and all those sorts of kind of security features that are important to have. Is open source software really safe? Could governments manipulate it too? Asked by a self-proclaimed noob. I really like this question because uh, it's an important one. And I think for a lot of software engineers and maybe a lot of people that are watching this video, it's not necessarily something that they would think to even think about because they just go, oh yeah, I know what open source software is. But for the vast majority of the people in this world, they don't really understand what open source software is and kind of rightly fully so, they have no need to understand what it is. Um, so when you say things like EOS is open source, uh, that doesn't really necessarily mean anything to people. And so I want to kind of highlight this question as well as kind of our final question, because uh, yeah, I think it's an important topic and I think for projects like EOS to break out into the mainstream, uh, maybe there needs to be more education on what open source software is and what that means. And in this instance, uh, what that means, and the question they're asking is, well, you know, could governments manipulate it? Could other companies still gain access? And from this perspective, the, so the short answer is no, they can't. But the reasoning for that is that, yes, when we say open source software, we mean that the code for that software is publicly available to view. What that doesn't mean is that A, anyone can just add what they want to that code and then distribute it officially through, for example, the EOS Foundation. No one can just inject whatever they want into the code base and then a new build of EOS is done and everyone downloads it. EOS, Marina and the E Foundation, that whole group of people uh, control what actually goes into EOS. So anyone can view the source code, anyone can see what's currently in EOS, and anyone can suggest changes, anyone could submit requests for changes. But EOS, the team behind it, still control what ultimately ends up in that code base and what ultimately ends up in the builds that we all install and download. Now, anyone could obviously take the source code of EOS and make their own operating system, and they could call it NOS or whatever they want, and they could distribute that with whatever they want in it. 
they could do that, but you still know that that isn't actually EOS. It's not being distributed through the official uh, means of download on the EOS website and everything else like that. So that's kind of the important thing here. Uh, it's really great when operating systems and stuff like this are open source because everyone, the community can look at that code and can be sure of what's going on. They know if there's any tracking going on or they know if there's anything bad happening can also be great because it does mean if there are any bugs or issues, lots of people can help solve those issues and make fixes. So you have that benefit, but you still have the control of knowing that one trusted entity is distributing the final build of that software. So no governments and other such organizations cannot just do what they want, cannot just access the system and inject viruses or anything else. Uh, that can't happen, but you still get the benefits of everyone being able to see the code and support it. So I hope that kind of helps and maybe I need to do a full video on open source in general. I think it's a really fascinating topic, but uh, hopefully that kind of sums up what's going on here anyway. And we're going to leave it there for today. So again, if you do have any other questions, please do comment them down below. Uh, I really enjoyed kind of putting these together and I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's kind of helped maybe a little bit as well. Um, and yeah, I will see you again for another video very, very soon. Bye for now.